Well, we're continuing in our series in the book of Ephesians. And, um, you know, uh, last time I spoke, which is really um, three weeks ago, I think, uh, the Apostle Paul had a goal whenever he wrote the book of Ephesians. And one was that uh, he wanted to encourage the church in their newfound faith. But number two, he wanted to uh, teach them about their spiritual inheritance so they would quit living like spiritual paupers. But number three, he wanted to instruct them on how to practically live the blessed and the victorious Christian life. It's one thing to pray a prayer and ask the Lord to forgive you your sins, but it's another thing to walk it out, right? And by the way, the purpose that Paul wrote the book of Ephesians for is the same purpose that we have the Bible today. For those same things, those of us that are in our faith, he wants to encourage us in our faith, and he wants to teach us about our spiritual inheritance, and he wants to teach us how to practically live out our Christian life. Isn't that great? That he left us with an owner's manual, a blueprint to live. And so, um, and so remember when Moses was dying and, um, and, uh, and Joshua was ready to take over as the leader and he was bringing the nation of Israel into the promised land. He told them this in, in Joshua 1 and 6. He said, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. I swore to their fathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Don't turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And so, you know, as you study the scriptures, we need to remember that the Bible, including the book of Ephesians, is the blueprint for going into the promised land and living successful. Sometimes we lose sight of that. We say, okay, what, what are we doing this for? Well, it's just like the keys to life. It's the keys to living your life successfully. So we should all hunger to learn and desire not just to know the Bible, but to apply the Bible. Why? Because it's how you're going to live your life successful. That's why. Amen. So whenever you get the privilege of listening to the word, man, you should sit on the edge of your seat with your ears and your spiritual eyes wide open. Why? Because you might just learn one little nugget of truth that can change your life this morning. Come on, are y'all with me out there? So the last two weeks, Pastor Brandon covered, you know, these two topics. First of all, he talked about living the spirit filled life. And that's what Ephesians 5, 18 says. Don't don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. But be filled with the spirit. How many of you know you can't live the changed life without the spirit? Amen. And then the next week he talked about the Lord's mandate for marriage. And and in Ephesians 5, Paul gives us this blueprint. Hey, this is how you should function in your marriage. And so he keeps going in that same theme. And in Ephesians 6, he continues on further to teach on the biblical order of the family. And then he instructs the church about the Lord's mandate for the family. And so he begins, he talks about the biblical order for children He talks about the biblical order for parents and the biblical order of honor. And so he begins by talking about the biblical order for children. And in Ephesians 6, 1, he says this, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. And if you honor your father and mother, things will go well with you and you will live a long life on the earth. In three verses, Paul lays out the biblical order for children. And he says, first of all, the biblical order of children consists of a life characterized by obedience to his parents. That's what he says in verse 1. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. Obey means to submit to, to comply with, to heed, to follow the directions or guidance of your parents' instructions. So every child who desires the Lord's direction for their life, must learn to submit to their parents' instructions and guidance. So in other words, when a parent says, clean your room, the godly thing to do is to... When a parent tells you to go, or you can't go to the Advent, or participate in that activity, you should just be willing to submit to that instruction. Amen? 
Now, why should children obey their parents? You know, the thing about the Bible is the Lord tells us how to live our lives. And he always, he always says, listen, let me give you a clue. This is why you should do it. And this is what will happen if you do do it, right? And so he says there, he tells us why we should obey our parents in the rest of the verse. He says, children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. And for this is the right thing to do. Two things. First, because you belong to the Lord. And so listen, as a Christian, we must realize that we don't have the privilege to do whatever we want anymore. As a Christian, it's our job and our responsibility to do what the Lord says. Amen? And so even though you might be a teenager, you might be 10 years old, 12 years old, you have an obligation as a Christian to do what God tells you to do, which is... Obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. But the second thing he says is because it's the right thing to do. Obeying your parents is what the Lord desires for us to do. You know, the, the biggest, you know, the worst thing that you could come across is having a child scorn and dishonor and be ugly and, and be rebellious towards a parent. It's just everything in you says it's out of order. It's out of order. Am I right? It's out of order. And so, and listen, when you obey your parents, it's what the Lord desires for you to do. And you never go wrong when you do what the Lord tells you to do. You'll never go wrong, right? Why? Because it'll it'll cause you to be successful in the land that he's sending you to. Now look at Colossians 3.20. It says, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. See, children obeying their parents in the home is is as spiritual as fasting and prayer. It's as spiritual as worshiping. And so listen, what we need to remember is how we live our life, our behavior, either attract or draws God's Holy Spirit to us or it repels God's Spirit. And if we want to live the Spirit-filled life as children, we have to obey our parents. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.30, and don't bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit, If we want to live a blessed and victorious life, we must learn to obey our parents. Amen? I remember whenever I first got saved, and I was 22 years old, and uh, I I thought, well, Brother Francis always taught about honor and and, and doing right by your parents, and so I thought, I'm going to go help my dad uh, cut his grass. i would be a blessing to him. And so I went and I said, Dad, I'm here. I wasn't living at his house anymore, but I said, I'm here to, uh, to cut your grass. And he said, well, uh, why don't you just go ahead and uh, start uh, in the back of our house and then work your way around. And so after he walked away, I thought, well, you know what? Everybody sees the front yard, not the backyard. We need to cut the front yard. And so I grabbed the lawnmower. And guess what I did? I went to the front yard. And so I, cut, I started cutting the grass and my dad came out and he wasn't happy. And so we got in this little tiff, and and so I'm driving home and saying, God, I just went over there to cut my dad's grass, and we get in this argument. And he said, well, if you'd have just obeyed what he asked you to do. I said, Help him, Lord. <laughs> so the biblical order for children is first to obey your parents' instruction. A life, but number two, a life characterized, or a, a, a biblical order for, for children is a life characterized by honor for his parents. Honor. Ephesians 2, 3 says this, or 6, 2 and 3. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. And you will have a long life on the earth. I mean, that sounds great right there, right? So honor, what does that mean? It means to esteem and value as precious. And so God calls every child to do two things. When it comes to their relationship with their parents, first, obey them. But number two, honor them. And so somebody said, you know, when you're living in your parents' house, your job is to obey your parents' instructions. And let me just stop right here just for a moment to say, there's a reason why God wants to teach his obedience in our home. Because it's the only way you're going to live in the promised land. you got to learn to obey. And it's always easier to learn that lesson in the home than out there in the hard, cruel, dark world. Amen. Amen? But once you've grown and out of the house, your job now is to continue to honor your parents. As grown children, we are to continue to esteem and value our parents as precious, right? Jesus modeled both. 
He obeyed and honored his earthly parents. You know, if you if you look at whenever he was a young man, remember whenever he was on the they were on their ride to Jerusalem to celebrate a feast and and he got lost. And you remember that all that encounter you remember uh, in verse uh, in Luke chapter two and verse 51, it says, then he returned to Nazareth with them, his parents, and was obedient to them. And his mother stored all these things in her heart. Jesus was obedient to his parents. How many of you know we should be like Jesus, right? By the way, Satan was disobedient to his parents. Jesus honored his parents when he was older. Remember whenever he was on the cross and they were standing around and, and in John 19, 26, Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved. And he said to her, dear woman, here is your son. And he said to his disciple, here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. What was he doing? He was honoring his mother by saying, Mom, I'm going to take care of you even though I'm gone. See, honor, he obeyed whenever he was young and he honored whenever he was old. Jesus honored his mother by taking care of her. Now here's the why. Why should we learn to obey and honor our parents? Here's the why. Because the following biblical order for children consists of a life characterized by the promised blessings. How many of you want to be blessed? And so Ephesians 6 says, Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, listen, things will go well with you and you will live a long life on the earth. How many of you like that for a blessing in your life? How would you like things to go well with you? So the Bible clearly tells us that if we honor our father and mother, things will go well and we will live long, a long life on the earth. So do you think it's possible that there are some students as well as grown adults that are struggling in their life today, struggling mentally, struggling emotionally, struggling spiritually? Why? Because they're violating this principle. You know, the Bible over and over again, it talks about the judgment that comes on us when we break this command from God. In Deuteronomy 5 and 16, honor your father and mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Come on, the Lord, the Lord was giving the children of Israel the prescription to the blessed, victorious life in the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, right? But listen, what's true for them is true for us. How many of you know we have a promised land? And you know, it's true that the promised land is when we die in faith, serving the Lord, we get to go to heaven. But I believe there's a promised land here and now. I believe there's the promised land is a picture of, come on, you out of Egypt and you, you in this blessed place. Amen. Come on. Everybody else might be struggling, but you're going to be blessed whenever you do what God says. Amen. Our promised land is a land flowing with bountiful blessings where he gives us victory over our enemies and he gives us a blessing that we didn't work for. We didn't earn. It just comes upon us. Come on. I'm talking to somebody today. Come on, are you hearing me today? And so listen, that's the blessing. So if you honor and if you obey, it's going to be well with you. And you know, I, you know, I mean, listen, just think for me. Just think, think about this with me for just a moment. We can get the picture, the natural picture. When a child has a parent that loves them, that disciplines them, and, and they don't do right, it's not good for them. Right? That's what the Bible says. If you obey, it's going to be good for you, right? But how many of you know whenever you do the right thing, it blesses you, right? So the first part of the biblical order of the family is that is the biblical order for children. that They need to learn to obey their parents. And whenever you get old and you, you no longer have to listen to their instruction, you're on your own. You're not, you're not free from obligation. You're still obligated. To honor, to treat as precious. You don't have to honor their activity. You don't have to honor their behavior. But you have to honor them. Come on, I need a better amen right there. Okay, so now, the second part of the Lord's mandate for the family is this. The biblical order for parents. Ephesians 6, 4. 
The children say, praise the Lord. Now we're going on to the children, to the parents. That's about time. <laughs> Ephesians 6, 4 says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. There's the prescription for the parent. The biblical order of the parent. Now, I know the scripture speaks directly to the fathers here, but I believe the principle applies to both mothers and fathers. That either the mother or the father violate this, it's not going to be good. And so the biblical order for parents consists of parenting with tenderness so we don't exasperate our children. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. You know what provoke means? It means to arouse to wrath, to provoke or frustrate, to utter exasperation and resentment. And so then the question is, how? How do you provoke your children to anger? Provoking our children to anger, I believe, can come from smothering them or being overbearing and hard and harsh and being overly controlling and, and dominating. How many of you know that's not a good environment to come up in? And so as parents, those of you that have small children, take heed. Don't provoke your children to anger. And listen, you could be godly and violate this over and over again. Come on, I need a better amen right there. Provoking our children to anger could come from being too lenient to being unattached and uninvolved and not being nurturing or loving enough. They're there, but you don't even recognize that they're there. So it can be from being overbearing and controlling, and it could be forgetting that you are a parent. These things can provoke our children to anger. I think the biggest mistake we make as parents is to parent under the control of our flesh, which is, which by the way, is selfishness. It's frustration. It's impatience. It's harshness. It's the opposite. Instead of parenting under the control of the spirit, which is self-control, kindness, patience, and tenderness. When you parent under the control of the spirit, you'll better like the fruit you produce. Amen? Come on, y'all help me preach this morning. Say amen. Fathers, Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. So when you boil it down, I think provoking our children to anger is caused by parenting in an ungodly way. It's parenting in an ungodly way. The biblical order for parents is parenting with tenderness so we don't exasperate or provoke our children to anger. That's pretty clear, isn't it? The biblical order for parents also consists of parenting with discipline and instruction. And that's what he says there in verse, in verse 4. He says, don't provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Now, first, we must parent through discipline. Now, discipline means, it doesn't mean to beat. Some of, some of us old school, like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a discipline. That means I'm going to knock the feathers off that boy. That's, that's, not, that's not biblical. That's not the Bible. That's not what it means. Discipline means to train and educate by helping cultivate the mind, the will, and the spirit of the child. So as parents, we are to help them learn and grow mentally. We are to help them learn godly character and morals. We are to help them learn and grow spiritually. How? By training them. And by educating them, how do we do that? Through the discipline of training our, our, as parents. So secondly, we, first of all, we need to discipline them, but then we need to, secondly, we must disciple through instruction. Through instruction. And think of it this way. Jesus with his disciples. You don't read about, man, he knocked the feathers off of them. Right? He corrected them. He disciplined them but he instructed them, right? So get that picture. So we have to instruct them. Instruction means to counsel, to exhort, and to correct. So as parents, 
we, we, you know, we got to exhort. In other words, we got to say, good job. That was great. Amen? So we're to help our children process and negotiate life and the challenges and situations they face. We're to help them develop godly character and morals by instructing them in godly behavior. And then we need to help them develop a relationship with God through teaching and instruction. So discipline or training and instruction. So our parenting has to have the balance between the both, between discipline and instruction. Sometimes we want to discipline them, which old school discipline, without instructing them. We don't instruct them to not stand on the table and then we knock their head off when they do. A little exaggeration there, but you get it, right? And so sometimes we want to discipline without instructing or instruct without discipline, and we end up with exasperated children. So here's the spirit-filled balance, I believe. Here's the spirit-filled balance. In Luke 2.52, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with men. And so what that says, wisdom means intellectual development. Instruction. We want them to continue to develop mentally. Statue is physical development. And that's discipline. We want them to develop and be physically healthy. Favor with God. That's spiritual development. That's instruction. We want them to have a strong relationship with God, right? And favor with man is the social and relational development. We have to discipline them if we want them to learn how to get along and relate well with others. No, you can't, you can't talk to somebody like that. You can't push them like that. You can't treat them like that, right? And so it's a combination. And so what we need to try to avoid as parents is giving our children all discipline with no nurtured instruction. And, 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 or, and giving our children all instruction with no discipline. Does that make sense? And so, if you give one without the other, it can exasperate them. You know, they found that, you know, some people say, well, I love my child and I just want to let them do what they want. Well, no, no, the Bible says opposite. If you love your child, you're going to give them some boundaries. And you know what the reality is? Children feel more secure with boundaries than without boundaries. And by the way, a good book to read on that is uh, Parenting uh, Boundaries for Parents or something like that. It's, it's one of those in that boundaries group, and it's for parents. It's a tremendous book. But listen, we also need to try to avoid unbalanced parenting. You know, uh, I, I told this story. Uh, you might have heard me tell this story, but every time I think of balance, I think of this picture. I had a friend. We were doing Bible study when I first got saved, and, and, and uh, we'd take turns teaching the lesson, and he taught a lesson on balance, and he drew this bodybuilder guy. You remember me telling that story? And, and, you know, the top part of the story, I mean, this guy had these biceps, man, that would knock you out. And, you know, he had these, you know, the V, the chest, you know, I mean, you know, uh, you know, the, the abs were just, you know, the, the six pack. And then when he got to the lower part of his body, he had these little stick legs. <laughs> and it was, it was funny, but it's a picture of being out of balance. It's a picture of being out of balance. And sometimes as parents, we help our children develop in one area while neglecting the growth and development in another area. And it's like, you know, it's like we're building this, this bodybuilder with skinny legs. And so sometimes some children excel academically while suffering spiritually because their parents put all their time and attention into Deeming what they think is most important, that they get a great degree and score the highest in the class. Some children are smart as a whip, but they don't have a clue about the Lord. Some children excel physically while suffering academically. They put all their, their stock into sports and all that stuff, and they neglect their, their, mental, uh, their mental development and so whenever they can't play sports anymore, they're, they're struggling. Are y'all with me out there? Some children excel spiritually. Listen, they excel spiritually while suffering academically or socially. They drag them to every church meeting there is, but they don't let them develop in the other areas of life. And so I think it's 
For us as parents, we gotta, we gotta strike for balance. Does that make sense? Strike for balance. We want them to develop like Jesus did in wisdom and stature and favor with God and with favor with man. Come on, if you receive that, say amen. All right. The biblical order for parents also consists of this. Parenting with the wisdom and grace you receive from the Lord. Notice this verse in, in verse 4. It says, Fathers, don't provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. We are to discipline and instruct our children with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Well, how can we give them what we don't have? How can we discipline and instruct our children with the wisdom that comes from the Lord if we have never first submitted to the discipline and instruction of the Lord? You know, there's a principle in the Bible that says whatever you plant in the ground is what's going to come up. It's called sowing and reaping. And so we have to remember that. That, listen, it's the old adage, you can't give what you don't have. And so if we want to parent right, we first have to parent out of who we are. And because they're going to become not what we want, but they're going to become who we are. Amen? And so we have to remember that if we're parenting, we have to parent out of what God teaches us. We have to be parented by the Lord. And so if you get this picture, we can't be this rebellious child in the family of God. And have a problem when our children have a rebellion problem in our home. Where we're sowing those oats. Come on. That's, I know that's tough, but that's right. Come on. Can I get a better amen? And so we have to learn the, the instruction and the order of the family. And so there's order for children. There's order for parents. And it brings me to the third and final point. point the biblical order of honor. Honor means to esteem and value as precious. And so before we can teach our children to honor their parents, we have to first honor our parents. We have to learn to honor. And honor really is submitting to authority. It's, it's recognizing and acknowledging authority. You know, there's one place in the Old Testament where the Bible says when the elders walked in the room, the young people stood up. How many of you know that's a honor? And we're losing that in our society. But the Lord wants to keep it in our society and He wants to keep it in our lives because it's how we succeed. And so, you know, the question is, how do you honor a dishonorable parent you don't have to honor their behavior. You don't have to honor their conduct. But you can on, honor the office. You can honor the office. You can honor the office that they sit in. You don't have 10 people that can take the position of your parent. But you got to honor that office. And you honor that office by recognizing, listen, I know they don't have it all together, but neither do you. Right? And listen... You know, some of our parents, if they had what we had, they would, have, they would be doing better than we did. Some of them didn't have the privilege of knowing the Lord, have the instruction of the Bible. I mean, we have the privilege of it, having inner healing and deliverance and, and all this stuff. Some of our parents never got that privilege. So we have to learn. We have to be understanding. Does that make sense? We have to be understanding and we got to learn to forgive. We got to learn to forgive. And make God's word a priority. And just decide. It doesn't matter what they do as far as for me. I'm going to honor. Come on, I need your help right this morning. We're going to honor. Right? Before you can successfully parent your children, you have to first learn to honor them by treating them in a godly way. You know, listen again, it's about the honor principle, treating people as precious and valuable. And there's no time and no place 
for Christian parenting where we abuse our children, where we mistreat our children. There's no room for that, gang. Not in the, not in the godly context. We have to honor them. I know they're their children and I know they work on your last nerve. But honor them while they work on your last nerve. Amen. Come on. If you agree, say amen. amen. Fathers, don't provoke your children by the way you treat them. So we got to treat them correctly. Listen, when you blow it, admit it. Take fault. I should not have talked to you that way. I should have not treated you that way, right? Come on. How many of you know we need the Holy Ghost to do this stuff? Come on. Do I, y'all agree? We need the Holy Ghost, man. I mean, I'm preaching myself in a deep hole right here, right? But you know what? Before we can teach our children to honor the Lord, we have to first honor the Lord. It's more than going to church. It's more than attending church. The very worst thing you could do, listen, this is not in my notes, but let me give this to you. The worst thing that you can do as a parent is drag your children to church and act like God is important and then go home and act like a devil. Come on, that's the worst thing you could do. I mean, stay home. Don't come to church. Amen. Because they like, this don't add up. Praise the Lord. Who's this guy that walked into my house? Amen. We're all made of flesh and blood and we have weaknesses. We have shortcomings. And really, what makes us struggle is the things we didn't get and the things that we came up in. But you know what? God's grace, is He's turning. It's like, you know, our generation or our lineage might have been going, going down. And God touched you. And he's wanting to turn it back up. And you might not bring it up here, brother or sister, but praise God, you get you going upwards and not going downwards anymore. Amen. So just do the best that you can and just give it all that you got and just let God make up the difference. Amen. Because ultimately, without his grace, we're done, right? But come on. Biblical mandate for the family is honor. We need honor in the home. We need honor between husbands and wives. Husbands need to honor their wives. Wives need to honor their husbands. We need to honor each other. We need to honor our children. Our children need to honor us. We need honor to esteem and value as precious. Honor is submitting to one another. It's acknowledging authority. It's, like, it's not being rebellious and, and hard-hearted. And that's what we need in our day, in our time. Amen. Honor our parents. Honor our children. Honor each other. Amen. But it all begins with honor of God. Honor of God. You know, there's one passage in the scripture where it says, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. See, what we got to worry about is not our outward activity. It's our inward heart. You know, we sang the song. Worship is of the heart. It's about the heart. It's about what's going on inside of us. Amen. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How many of you know our heart needs to be in it? And we need to honor, we need to treat the Lord as precious and as valuable. Amen. Come on, how many? That's what we need to do. We just need to honor the Lord. And if we'll honor the Lord, the Lord will honor us. The Lord will bless us. The Lord will give us a promised land. The Lord will shower us. It matters not whatever other, what other people do. It matters what the Lord does. And as for me and my house, we need to honor the Lord. And we need to honor one another. And the anointing of God and the grace of God will come upon us. Amen. Come on. Come on. I believe this with everything in me. And the Lord will bless you and favor you and give you a great life. You will live long in the land and you will dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Come on. Would you do me a favor and just stand right now? Come on. Just stand. Now listen. We got to honor the Lord. Let's take a moment to just honor the Lord right now. Come on. Let's just take a moment. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. Take a moment right where you are. Come on. Let go of the pride. 
pride and the ego and the arrogance. Come on, let it all go right now. Come on, let go of all, all rebelliousness and all of that stuff. Just let it all go and make a decision today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be right with God and I'm going to serve the Lord and I'm going to give him my all. Thank you, Father, for the grace of God. Thank you for the touch of God. Thank you for the hand of God. Thank you for the blessing of God. Lord, we thank you that right now, Lord God, that this respect is going out of the window. Lord, we thank you that right now, hatred and ugliness is going out of the window. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the honor of the Lord is coming into the house right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let the spirit of the Lord, come on, just some of you, maybe you just need to repent and you just need to forgive right now and just say, Lord, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Uh, listen, I know some of you are hurting. Some of you have been, been abused physically, sexually. You've been mistreated. You've been hurt. You've been a punching bag. But come on, just decide right now for your sake. Lord, I forgive them. I forgive them. Lord, I don't honor their behavior, their attitude, their activity. But Lord, I honor their office right now. Praise you, Lord. Some of you, some of you teenagers right now just need to make a decision to say, I'm not going to keep rebelling. I'm not going to keep working against but my parents. I'm going to submit to them right now. Thank you, Father God. Come on, the Bible says that the ravens will pluck out the, the eyes of the foolish son, our daughter that dishonors his father and mother. Come on, but the blessing of the favor of God comes upon us when we honor. Father, we love you today. We bless you today. We glorify Come on, the Spirit of the Lord is in here. The Spirit of the Lord is in here. Come on, just respond. Come on, just respond to the Lord right now and just say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, come on. Honor goes beyond the family. It goes into your workplace and it goes into it goes into the church and it goes into the neighborhood. It goes into the city. It goes everywhere. Come on, let's decide today that we're going to walk in the honor of the Lord. Father, we honor you. We worship you. We bless you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Praise you, Father God. I want to read one more scripture and then we're going to go. It's in Romans chapter 1, and in verse 21. And it says this, Even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks. Notice it says, Honor Him as God or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculation. And their foolish heart was dark. I don't know if you've ever surrendered your life to Christ, but the first step to receiving the blessings that comes with honor is honoring God by surrendering your heart. Would you just bow your head with me for just a moment? And we're going to pray together. And if you if you're a born again Christian, if you're saved, would you just pray right now and and just put your hands down for just a second and just pray and intercede. If you hear today and you say, Todd, I, I'm not right with God. I, I, I did never surrendered, but I realized the need for it this morning. The Lord's tugging on my heart and I want to do it. If that's you, would you just raise your hand and, and just hold it up? Ma'am, I see your hand. Ma'am, sir, I see your hand. Anybody else, just hold your hand. Just hold it high so I can see it. So I can, right here, I see your hands. I see your hands. Right here, I see your hands. Thank you for being so courageous and bold. Or maybe you at one time, I see your hand, man, back here. At one time you said, you know, I used to be serving God, but somehow my heart has drifted and I've gotten away from God and it's time to come back. If that's you, just lift your hand and say, Todd, that's me. I need to re-surrender. And listen, those of you that raise your hand, come on, we're in the family of God. Raise both of your hands right now. Come on, I want you to be bold about this thing. Now listen, those of you that have your hands right, step out of the pew. Come here, come up here at the altar and say, Lord, I'm going to honor you this morning in the front of everybody in this building. Just step out of the pew. Come here. Come on. Come on. Walk down right now. Come on. Just come down. We're going to honor the Lord. We say, Lord, I'm giving my life. I'm giving my heart to you. Thank you, Father God. There you go, sir. Come on. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. It's one thing to raise your hand. It's another thing to say, I'm going to honor you, Lord. Come on. The Lord says, if you are willing to, to if you are willing to, to acknowledge me before man, I will acknowledge you before my Father. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. Come on. It's come on. It's time that we get real and we do business with God. Come on. There's no no half heartedness, but going all in. Come on. They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Come on. Let's decide right now. Today, we're going to give our heart to him. We're going to surrender our all to him. Come on. Just pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for shedding your blood. 
so my sins could be forgiven and I could be a Christian. I honor you, Lord. I honor you today. I ask you to cleanse me, wash me, purify me, fill me with your spirit that I might be able to live the Christian life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for valuing me, for honoring me, and allowing me to be part of your family. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Congratulations. Listen, if you, if you would just stay here for just a moment, we have something for you. We want to give you a gift. We want to give you some tools. Miss uh, Dixie and Rob, if you guys would come and just help them right away. And just, come on, how many of you believe we need to honor? Come on. How many of you believe the principle of honor works? Amen. Come on. I want to pray for, I want to pray the Lord's blessing over you as you honor him. Come on, honor the Lord. Come on, honor the Lord. Come on, we honor you, Lord. Father, we pray right now the favor of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord, the grace of God over every family, every home, every individual. Thank you, Lord, for the touch of God that is over the people of God today. It's in the mighty and the strong name of Jesus, I pray. 